Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to launch Starship on top of the nearest rocket and send it to the moon and hopefully bring it back to low earth orbit. This is basically an error breaking test for Starship. So we're going to see how many passes it needs to air break into low Earth orbit. Now, in the previous video on the Daenerys um, Aerospike SSTO, we found out that basically had a capacity of 880 tons to low Earth orbit. Uh, if we wanted to have these flaps that uh, help with descent, and also the Raptor booster pods that help with the final landing or splashdown. Uh, of course, I didn't manage to splash down properly in that video, but that was more me not working out rather than the system not working out. So uh, everything else seemed to work out fine as intended at least. So we will go with that and assume that it can carry 880 tons to low Earth orbit uh, as an SSTO. And so we've underfueled Starship like that. It has this much fuel and we will see how it does everything else. So a little bit of suspense. I know how much Delta V it has, but you don't know how much Delta V it has under fueled like this. Again, this whole Daenerys SSTO deal is to save me the trouble of refueling Starship in orbit. Because let's say Starship has a 100 ton capacity, right? Payload capacity to low Earth orbit if everything is reused. Well then, given that, it's going to take 8 trips at least. Well, uh, 8 trips to get... 800 tons. We actually have less than 800 tons of fuel. Uh, some of that is the dry mass. So it's probably like uh, six, seven trips to fill it up to this point uh, with uh, Starship. That's a lot of work. And then to fully fill it up, it's even more than that. Now, if they operate the Raptor booster, uh, the, the Raptor engines, and therefore have more power and uh, super heavy and all that business, they'll have a higher payload capacity, and then it'll be fewer trips, but it's still a lot of work. So uh, just if, if you would like to imagine that this is a super heavy and we're just going to be doing all those trips, great. <laughs> that's that's basically what it's for. So, ignition. We're at Launch Complex 39B, by the way. And launch. Ooh. Oh, those launch clamp thingies. Uh... Get back over here, get back over here, get back over here. Okay. Let's try and get it to go like that. Alright, well, we're off. <laughs> a little bit of a power slide there. I don't know what's up with those launch clamps. I think it's because of this, um, the ground on this pad or something. We'll have to find a different place. We can close this window for now. Okay. We're fine. Now, of course, uh, compared to the Monument Launcher, the Daenerys gets a lot less lag, which brings up a point. People are concerned about the lag on the Monument Launcher, but in a way, the lag is deliberate to give you a sense of how big it is. I could have easily designed the Monument Launcher in Blender and brought it as models like that, and, you know, put a whole bunch of engines into one part, like I did with this. This is just one part. And that would save a lot of lag, right? I mean, I could have done that instead. Why is it tilted like this? Okay, and there we have it. Six minutes to orbit with the Daenerys SSTO. It's got plenty of remaining delta V for deorbiting. Uh, the recording is 11 minutes in, and I did, uh, of course, an intro talk, so that cut into the time for launch. Not bad, you know. Anyway, uh, separation. So, we have 6,700 meters per second. We have no cargo right now, so that's important. We're doing a cargoless uh, round, but since we're air braking, it doesn't really matter a whole lot, because the remaining fuel is going to end up acting like cargo in a way. You'll see what I mean. So first of all, let's transfer over to the moon, obviously. So let me plot for that. We should, we're should we relatively in line. Oh, in terms of TAC life support, we've only got three Kerbals on. Hello? Uh, so they've got like half a year worth. 
it's meant to be uh, with 20 crew to have about a month's worth. So maybe we should go with a polar orbit because that's where all the water is and everything. Let's say polar-ish. Let's, let's just go with this sort of thing. Well, it's obviously not reading the burn time properly. Don't know why. Oh well, anyway, ignition. Ooh, that engine's clipping a little bit there. Should limit the gimbal range on that. Oh, now it's rolled the wrong way. That's the opposite way that I wanted it to roll. Um, 180, please. There we go, that's more like the look that I wanted. Okay, we are a little bit late on the burn, as expected, because we were still trying to orient properly. Okay, we are on kill rotation. And shut down. 0.6 meters per second. Make a minor adjustment here. So apparently there are frozen orbits around the moon. Raider Nick told me about this, where the mass concentrations don't pull down your orbit. And 86 degrees is one of those nice orbits where you don't have to worry. 86 degree inclination is a nice orbit where you don't have to worry about that. Not too sure how exactly that works out, but it sounds good to me. Uh, so, that seems like the handiest for the whole polar operation stuff. So basically we could put a station into orbit around the moon at low orbit. And that would be a nice idea. <laughs> so, of course I'm going to be doing that uh, during live streams actually. We're doing a whole, whole Kerbal deployment business there. Uh, eventually I'll probably cut those videos up for YouTube but maybe not immediately. So we need to get to 86 degrees, so something like that. Doesn't seem like it'll cost that much. We have 3,600 left, so we're going to take roughly 800 to make orbit, 800 to come back, and then we'll have some to slow down if necessary, but we'll see if we need it. So... Potentially slowing down on the way back from the moon will be a mix of using propulsion and using aero braking. For those wondering if Starship, even fully fueled, can travel to the moon, make orbit, land, take off again, break orbit, and come back. No, <laughs> that's too much. That's too much to ask. There's Hawaii. Right there. Okay, off we go. It is always better to have a dedicated lander anyway. You just have the lander go up and down from the surface. It's much better that way. I don't know if 94 degrees does the same thing as 86. I would suppose so. Uh, we'll just go ahead and get to 86 degrees. It shouldn't be too bad. Unfortunately, they... Oh no, we don't have enough ignitions on the raptors. Gosh darn it, who decided that the raptor vacuums would have only one ignition? That's just stupid. That seems like a critical flaw, so we'll have to use the surface engines in order to do everything else. That's not great. Oh, I see what they did. They tried to put negative one in the ignition slots to indicate infinite ignitions. I think that just got read as one. Well, that's gonna take too long. All right. Um, how many ignitions do these have? Five only. Well, that'll be enough for our purposes. Okay, that's eighty-six degrees. We'll, well, I guess we'll keep it at this height. It'll be fine. You know what, this is just a test. We'll take a rough number for now. This will be fine. Okay, on to the moon. Okay, settling fuel down. At some point, <laughs> whenever 
Whenever you're ready, sea level engines. There we go. Ignition. I'll try to get into a lower orbit. It's not so much a matter of delta V as the uh, we have to not use any more ignitions on these engines, and that means having to do that burn with the RCS. Okay, that's good enough for now. We can pretend that this will eventually rendezvous with a station in one of these frozen orbits. Those are some big boulders right there. Okay, yeah, trying to bring down the apoapsis of the RCS is going to take too much time, it looks like. You can see the rate at 3x physical time warp of just the RCS. It is a heavy, heavy vehicle still, and the RCS isn't that powerful. It's powerful enough, but not that powerful. Uh, we are 280 tons right now around the moon, so that's about 160 tons worth of fuel, or... You could subtract out the fuel and add in payload in exchange, one way or another. Uh, all we need is 800 to get back and then the aero braking. I mean, we don't want to have to make more than like one aero braking pass, maybe two. I mean, more than two aero braking passes, I should say. That's for radiation reasons. Uh, so we'll see how it does. Now, super important, we do want to get into an inclination around the Earth that will eventually meet up with Cape Canaveral or Brownsville or wherever, right? That sets a minimum inclination. There's no real maximum inclination. Well, it'd be more convenient not to get too high an inclination at the same time, so something around between 28 and 35 would be nice. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so that would be a good enough periapsis. Um, we, for the first pass, we probably should be a little bit higher. I'll probably make a quick save, just in case, you know, I, uh, we don't know exactly when we'd blow up, or how deep into the atmosphere we'd blow up, or whether it's too high. There's a lot of variables involved. Could probably do some calculation and do a range of testing based on ballistic coefficients. Ballistic coefficient is the important number here. That's how much mass you're putting on a particular surface area. So that is what we're interested in. And that will determine how much drag we get and how many error breaking passes we need. Now again, we can use the surplus fuel in order to make further error breaking passes, but doing so would limit how much cargo we can bring. So the less we do of that, the more cargo we can carry to the moon. Okay, sign fuel down, there's Earth, and ignition. Just barely see the purple plume in the dark here. Now, because we will be carrying some spare fuel back, that means we'll have a worse ballistic coefficient than normal. So we're testing generously, if you will. We're giving ourselves some leeway. Let's say 85 kilometers to start out. Okay, well, here we go. Looks very dark compared to the surface, but that's because we've got our non-shiny side facing the sunlight. Okay, right around here I'm gonna Alt F5. Starship re-entry test, but I don't want atmospheric autopilot doing anything. That will just complicate matters. Of course we're gonna come in on the nighttime side. Okay. Time to orient. We're going to go with a 60 degree pitch. Hold on, let me see if I can up the ambient light. The reflectivity of the body of Starship seems to be reflecting a whole lot of darkness. 
Okay, maybe we should tune down the attitude adjustment again. So while I did configure the body, of course, I did not configure these wing pieces, and so if they explode, we will know that we have gone too far. They were configured by the realism overhaul peoples. Not to mention the engines, of course, which have negligible heat tolerances. Internal temperature, they've got good heat tolerances. External temperature, not so much. So we've got a 9 day orbital period right now, 9 day 18 hours. We'll see how low this brings us. Orbital period is important because that determines how long the crew is going to spend in you know, radiation belts and such. So we want that as low as possible. We do not want them hanging out in high radiation for many extra days. And the body itself is overheating. So I actually gave less heat tolerance to the body than the wings have, or the fins. So we're going up again. We're down to a three day orbital period. So we could go lower than 85, but with the body already starting to overheat, even uh, one kilometer lower is a whole lot more heat. So do not underestimate that uh, when you're trying this sort of thing yourself, air breaking something in the atmosphere. Uh, really, it's kilometer by kilometer. You, uh, if five, kilometer, five kilometers down from here would probably blow this up, basically, is what I'm saying. Now, we did not burn enough uh, Delta V to use the engines to bring it down further and uh, we can check that if we really wanted to get into low earth orbit we we've basically burned about 500 800 meter uh no about 500 meters per second so that's not as much as we needed to if we could lean a little bit lower that'd be nice it'll be easier to go lower on the next pass than on this pass so we'll go we'll try 80 on the next pass and see what happens. Okay, we are entering the atmosphere for the second pass. 80 kilometers. Now obviously this is probably gonna take much more testing to get the exact right number to do that will uh, maximize our braking without actually breaking our starship. But this will give us a basic benchmark to start off with, at least. Lots of rocking back and forth, overheating indicators sort of building up. But we're at 83 kilometers, 82 kilometers, oh, 82 kilometers still, 81 kilometers. Eighty kilometers. It doesn't look like I was too far off, to be honest. Uh, this is pretty hot, but we'll survive it, I think. The rocking back and forth is mainly because the roll thrusters are so close to the center of mass in that axis. If we had outboard thrusters, like on the wings, that'd be better. But they'll be all right. A little bit of wiggle never hurt anyone. And we're carrying loads of fuel compared to what the thrusters use. But we didn't really burn off that much speed. I mean, we got our or orbital period down. Unfortunately, our apoapsis is going to end up inside the radiation belts. So it'd be good if we would use some engine power to bring ourselves to lower earth orbit right now, but we don't really have enough. If you take a look at this orbital speed, we're still pretty fast, pretty fast. We basically on each pass, we get about 500 meters per second. It's a whole lot more like the shuttle. The shuttle took more than this probably will uh, when I tried to bring it back from the moon, but it's not like my Shinkansen, which is fairly light on a really big surface area that has I mean, they could send something to meet up with it at a high orbit. 
No need to bring it all the way back down. If something could meet up with it higher up, that'd be nice. But right now, using our Delta V, we can only get about there-ish. So I'll take it in for one more pass. Our inclination is also not high enough to meet up with Cape Canaveral, so that's another flaw. We could always fix that at Apoapsis, uh, especially after the first pass, or even before the first pass, we could have done that. Okay, we are re-entering the atmosphere. Okay, overheating indicator start at 88 kilometers. We're going all the way down to 76 this time though. Okay, and we are going back up. So once again, we could risk something a little bit more, but not a whole lot. I had trouble holding pitch there. Okay, the resulting apoapsis is probably going to be in a bad place, so we'll try using the engines to bring ourselves to a lower orbit, a safer, less irradiated orbit. And we'll call it so. Three air braking passes. Uh, we're still going very fast, so... Um, it's going to take a lot of work to bring it down, it looks like, and maybe I could up the heat tolerance of the Starship body uh, to match that of the wings. I don't know if it's because the wing uh, wings dissipate heat better, or whether the actual heat tolerance is better, I don't know. I didn't set it very low, I mean, the heat tolerance on the body, so I think it's realistic. Okay, ignition. I'll fix the periapsis when we get back to apoapsis. So, as we get this nice view over North America here, and South America, uh, though it's a little bit shaded down there, I'll say that, well, we don't have the best sort of results that I would like, but certainly we have results. And it suggests that there's a possibility, I'm thinking more of Mars here, uh, that, you know, of course, with coming back from Mars, we have to make the capture into Earth orbit in one pass. That's iffy. It's right on the borderline. If you uh, come into Earth at, uh, SOI the right way, it might work without the thing blowing up. You know, we, we need to burn off something like 600 meters per second to capture. So it's close. It's close. But obviously, something coming back from Mars is going to be coming in faster than something coming in from the moon. But... Yep, we'll have to see that one. As for this, obviously if we made enough passes, we would be able to get into low Earth orbit. But thinking about the radiation, it's a bit dodgy. Now obviously if the body of Starship is lighter that would help, but then there's also the matter of whether it can bring payload back or not, and whether it packs enough fuel for landing or not. Right now with this amount we might have enough fuel for landing if it can land directly from this altitude, but it probably wouldn't be able to It'd burn up uh, if we went uh, aimed at a low enough periapsis for it to do that. But it could make one more error breaking pass before actually attempting a landing. Okay, within a stable, I'll be at a high orbit right now, and with more testing needing to be done, obviously. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.